Hi, I'm Maris, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the lab value of serum osmolality. I'm going to be following along using our lab values flashcards. These are available on our website, levelupRN.com, if you want to grab a set for yourself. Or if you are more of a fan of digital products, I would invite you to check out Flashables, the digital version of all of our flashcards available on demand and at your fingertips wherever you go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So today we're talking about serum osmolality. And if you watched my video on urine osmolality, these are very similar values. However, in this case, we're not looking at the osmolality of urine. We're looking at the osmolality of your blood serum. So again, what does this mean? Osmolality is just a measure of how many particles are dissolved in a liquid. That's, that's really all we're looking at. So we're looking at how much stuff is dissolved in the liquid portion of your blood, okay? So this is not counting things like uh, red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets. Those are not uh, the part of your plasma. Those are the formed elements. So we are just looking at how much stuff is dissolved in the plasma once it is separated out from those formed elements. And the expected range here is going to be 285 to 295 milliosmoles per liter, okay? So again, we are just looking to see, do you have pretty well uh, balanced blood here? Do you have a good balance of fluid to things dissolved in it? Or are we looking at we've got way too much fluid or way too much stuff? Either way. So let's talk about this a little bit. When we talk about decreased serum osmolality, this is dilute blood, okay? So we have more liquid than stuff, or we have fewer particles than expected. Either way, we're talking about dilute blood here. So some possible causes are going to be SIADH, uh, overhydration, or what we would say like fluid volume overload, um, and then some different types of uh, uh, electrolyte imbalances such as hyponatremia. The point here being that uh, with SIADH or fluid volume overload, I've got too much fluid. I'm holding on to a lot of fluid. So even though I've got the normal stuff dissolved in the blood, you've added all this extra fluid and diluted down my blood, giving me a decreased serum osmolality. Now contrast this with an elevated serum osmolality. In this case, we're saying we've got a lot of stuff dissolved in a little bit of liquid. In this case, some possible causes of this concentrated blood would be diabetes insipidus, where I'm losing a lot of fluid through the urine, uh, dehydration of any variety for any reason, so any kind of fluid volume deficit, and then DKA also is a potential cause here, along with some different electrolyte imbalances such as hypernatremia. Again, the point that I want to get across to you here is in this case, we have concentrated blood, we have too much stuff or too little fluid either way. Now, one of the things that I want to point out to you here is that when it comes to things like SIADH and diabetes insipidus, it's going to be opposite when it comes to the serum osmolality when compared to the urine osmolality. So let me give you an example here. In the case of SIADH, I'm holding on to a lot of fluid. I'm not letting any fluid out through my urine. So in this case, I would expect my serum osmolality, my blood, to be dilute, right? I'm expecting that I've got a lot of fluid diluting the stuff inside my blood. However, I'm not really passing it out as urine. So in this case, I'm going to expect the urine osmolality to be increased. A lot of stuff, not a lot of fluid, right? So you see how those things are opposite. It's the same thing with diabetes insipidus. In this case, uh, I'm passing a lot of fluid. I'm not holding on to enough. So my serum osmolality is going to go up. I have more stuff and less fluid. My urine osmolality is going to go down because I have a ton of fluid that's diluting out the stuff. So just don't get those things confused. Remember that they are opposite because it has to do with the fluid in my body versus the fluid I'm passing out through my body. All right, I'm so glad you stayed until the end because I'm gonna test your knowledge of a key fact provided in this video with a quiz question. When reviewing the lab results for a patient experiencing an exacerbation of congestive heart failure, 
how should the nurse expect their serum osmolality to be affected? It will be decreased due to fluid volume overload. All right, that is it for this video. I do hope you learned something. If you did, would you leave us a comment and let us know what? It really makes our day to see that. And hey, if you have a great way of remembering something that I didn't mention, let us know in a comment too. We love seeing it, but it's beneficial to other learners as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much and happy studying. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. And if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and let us know what you found to be particularly helpful.